Indonesian President Joko Widodo has talked a good game, promising more market liberalization, friendlier labor laws, and better ministers to execute his business-friendly reforms. However, these might be empty promises. He understands that Indonesia needs foreign investment to grow so that the economy can grow more than 5% annually, but he is hamstrung by the vested interests in his coalition. Look no further than his second term cabinet for evidence. A bloated team full of mismatches and controversies forged to satisfy demands from political parties that enabled his re-election. Even his political nemesis Prabowo Subianto is defense minister all for the sake of political stability. The only encouraging cabinet choices relate to his infrastructure legacy. The best newcomer is Jokowi's re-election campaign manager and former owner of Inter Milan, Eric Tohir, who has taken over the state-owned enterprise portfolio. SOEs are the pillars of Jokowi's infrastructure drive and ambition to develop globally competitive downstream industries, and Tohir skills will help reform them. Other ministerial choices do not offer much hope, especially in energy, mining, agriculture, and forestry. One of the worst choices was appointing a protectionist who lacks international exposure to lead the investment coordinating board. Foreign investors will find rising economic nationalism within this cabinet. Politically connected local players have supporters who can control the levers of foreign investment, and those who already operate in Indonesia will continue to face major political and regulatory risks. But a bleak 2020 can be a blessing in disguise if economic figures fall below the coalition's expectation. Jokowi could justify a cabinet shuffle and recalibrate his policies to make Indonesia more attractive for investment. Shrewd replacements saved his government in his first term and could again. And only then Jokowi can keep his promises for an investment-friendly Indonesia.